Today I will show you three types of shadows in Photoshop, so let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how to ground the model to the background, how to glue the model to the background using the shadows, of course, because shadows is there to make the impression that the model is fixed on the background. For that I use three types of shadows usually and first it's contact shadow, second ambient shadow and the third it's main shadow from the main light, from the key light on the scene. Let's jump into Photoshop and let me show you that on example. Alright guys, for that I will use this interesting scene that I already used in previous episode but I will use it here for this tutorial too. Okay, here we have this rude guy here and we will eliminate him because he's so rude and we have Dr. Watson here, that is actually myself, and I drink everything and now this bottle is empty. And I'm of course examining the bottle while the Sherlock Holmes is examining the crime scene here. It's a hand of dead body and some playing cards and Joker here in the hand. Okay, and we will not need the Sherlock for now. Let's close him, let's hide him and let's go here to the Watson layer. All right, let's make three layers below this this group. For that, let's use Control Command key and just three times press on this layer icon. All right, let's first name this contact, contact shadow. Second one, it's ambient, and this it's main, main shadow. Okay, let's go first to the contact shadow. As the words say, the contact shadows is just where the model is touching the ground. That's the contact shadow. And let's go here. And let's select all three layers and put in multiply blending mode. I will use multiply blending mode and I will use some dark color from the ground here. All right, let's use B for a brush. Go here and contact. Use hard, hard brush around 80 or so percent and okay just go here with alt or option key just sample some dark color like let me see maybe something like so or even darker where is it like so okay oops it's not this one it's dark like so okay now when i paint i will paint with 100 percent opacity here Maybe let's use a little bit lighter color, like so. Oh, that's nice, that's better. Okay, now I will paint with 100% opacity just the contact shadow. First contact, it's obviously here where this shoe is touching the ground, like so. Let's use 60% for here, because I want to make a little bit wider, and just a few times go like so and that's that's first shoe and let's go here on the other shoe and just make one contact shadow just here all right it will be much easier to see what's going on here if the model had uh, white or some light, light color shoes let me just demonstrate that for you let's brighten the model here and something like so and as you can see the contact shadow, it's only this shadow where the uh, shoes are, are touching the ground. And we can just use a little bit of eraser tool and just erase something here like so, just a little bit. All right, nice. And let's delete this curve layer. It was just for this example. Okay, and let's make another contact shadow here. 100% opacity and and of course brush tool not eraser and something like so just a touch let me see yeah it's too much here but that's nice okay the second let me unzoom this okay the second shadow will be ambient shadow is the shadow from ambient light and think about that like you can turn off the key light the main light in the scene and what is left off that's the ambient light. And let's go here in Photoshop. 
Okay, and let's make the ambient shadow. Go here on ambient layer and use really soft brush, for example, 0% hardness like so, and maybe 10% opacity. And let's go here, make it bigger and just paint a little bit like so, a little bit in between here. Basically, it's the shadow from the light here in the front of this guy, in the front of Dr. Dr. Watson, right? And some shadow here, like so, for the umbrella. Okay, we can even blur this a little bit if we want. Go to here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let me see, maybe something like so. Let's turn this layer just for help. And this is the ambient shadow, as you can see, before and after, before and after, and before contact and ambient and after contact and ambient shadow. We can always turn the opacity of this shadow if it's too much, something like so. All right, and now let's go to the main shadow. It's the shadow from the main light in the scene. As you can see here, the main light is behind this wall here. And it will be in this direction, something like so. All right, let's go zoom here a little bit. Use a very hard brush, for example, around 90% and opacity 100%. Okay, and now we need to think how the shadow will look like. First, it will go from this contact part here, like so, and then like this is going up, this is going like here, okay, something like so. And then this is going like here for, for a while and then it's going a little bit here. It's this part, this part, it's this part and this part here, it's this part, but this is just approximately, you need to sell the effect. It doesn't need to be so realistic. Okay, let's go this part here will be like so and then this part is going something like so like so and again like so something like so and now let's fill this with the color of course and as I already said this is just approximately you, you need only to sell the effect now we will refine this a little bit let's use the razor tool and Erase with 100% opacity and hard brush. Erase this. Okay. Can even make something like so here. And we can always go and paint back some parts like so. Okay. And now let's go here to umbrella and paint like this straight line here and then we have we have this part and this part like so okay and here is the handle with the arm and etc etc but this is just approximately all right that's okay maybe to add a little bit more here it's too much something like so and now it's okay all right now we need to refine this main shadow let's go back to the photoshop and let's control command t and i will just transform this a little bit to go on this way and use the warp tool and just move some parts back like so okay and make it a little bit that's really nice the second thing what I want to do is to blur these edges a little bit because uh, when you look a real shadow let's use this blur tool here when you look uh, to a real shadow the parts that are closer to the model they are really harsh and when the shadow is go off from a model it's a little bit more blurry depends of the light type but always when the shadow is away from the model it's more blurry than than here where the model is okay and the same stand for this shadow okay 
like so here is a lot blurrier than here and that's okay all right the next step will be to put the mask here and to refine the visibility of this shadow for that i will use the gradient tool here and i will use black to transparency all right and just paint something like so let me see it's not bad let's paint even more it's not bad at all then i will use a brush tool really soft brush and maybe 10 percent opacity let me check soft brush yes and just paint again with that like so with black brush as you can see let me show you the mask here this is the mask okay and let's paint a little let's bring back the sherlock to see wow it's nice sherlock and of course if we have sherlock here in the scene we need to we need to delete this part of the shadow because it won't be visible from a sherlock and we need to paint on his shoes a little bit of the shadow but for this example we will not do this that we will do that without the sherlock all right guys those are three types of shadows that i'm using in my photo manipulation process to sell the effect that the model it's fixed it's glued it's grounded to the floor it's contact shadow ambient shadow and the main shadow contact shadow it's where the model it's touching the ground ambient shadow it's from all light except the main light and the main or key shadow it's from the main or key light let me show you one more time here in photoshop let's hide this and now we have no shadows and the model it's now floating it's actually not grounded as you can see here but with the contact shadow ambient shadow and the main shadow we have impression that the model it's really grounded here it's glued with this background floor here let's bring back the sherlock here and what is he looking nothing oh let's bring back this wow and let's bring back this criminal guy criminal mind oh he's so rude let's cancel him okay all right guys we are finished for today i hope that you understand the point of three types of shadows in photoshop and that you learn something new out of it. If you find this tutorial helpful and useful, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe it for future episodes. That's it for today. See you next week in the next episode. Bye bye. Now it's sunny day, now it's cloudy day. We have a remote control for our weather for today. Sunny day and cloudy day. Just order your weather today. See you next week in the next episode. Bye bye.